our first uh, message today is called Knowing God. And I'd like you to turn with me to John 17, and we're reading from verse 1 to 3. John 17, verse 1 to 3. It says this, After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you this morning and we thank you for your word and we open our hearts and minds to you and we pray that you will speak into our life today and that, Lord, that your word will be rhema to us, Lord, that it will bring transformation in our life so that we can truly know you in our life. And so we commit this time to you now and we pray that your Holy Spirit would illuminate your word and bring transformation in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, this passage that we're reading in John 17 is actually the true Lord's Prayer. Now, you know, why do I say that? Well, because the other Lord's Prayer that we, we are accustomed to or that we have learned, the other Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, is actually when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. But this one is actually his prayer. So this is actually, I would say, the real Lord's prayer. He's actually praying in this. In, in fact, it started by saying he looked toward heaven and prayed. So this was his prayer. And so anyway, this is now toward the end of Jesus' ministry. And uh, Jesus is soon going to die on the cross for your sins and for mine. And at this time, he is praying for the future believers, those that would begin to put their faith in him. And notice what he said in verse 3. He said, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ. And then he said, whom you have sent. Now, therefore, we, we find here that God the Father had sent Jesus for a purpose. Jesus was sent for a purpose, uh, and we just celebrated the whole season of Christmas talking about that, that the, the birth of Jesus Christ, the reason why he came for us, that God sent his Son, and we know that from John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him well, shall not perish, but what? Have eternal life, right? And so basically, it, that's the reason why Jesus sent, uh, God the Father sent Jesus. So why did Jesus come? What's life all about? Well, what's Christianity all about? Is it just a, a, a label that we have? What's it really all about? Um, you know, Christianity is more than just heaven and hell. Although that is a big part of it, but it's much bigger than that, it's much deeper than that, much wider than that. The Christian life is more than not sinning, all right? The Christian life is more than the life after. Uh, it's all about the kingdom of God, the here and the now. So let's break it down. In this passage that we read, there are three main truths that we read here uh, in these verses of Scripture. And so let me just mention these three things today. So the first truth is this. Jesus came to give us eternal life. Now I know that sounds so simplistic, but let's understand it a little bit more. Here's the question. Why did Jesus die on the cross? Now the usual answer, if you have been in church long enough, the usual answer is to pay for our sins, right? And so the question is, why does our sin have to be paid? Well, because our sins were paid so that we can have eternal life. And that's why we find in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, Paul said it this way, For the wages of sin is death, 
But the gift of God is eternal life in whom? In Christ Jesus, our Lord. So does this make sense now? The consequence of our sin, all right? The, the wages, uh, the result of our sin is death. And death is really nothing more than a total separation from God. That is the death. When you die, totally separated from God unless you know Him. <laughs> All right? So death separates us from God, but He said God's gift is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So it's this eternal life that we have in Him. All right? Um, and, and that eternal life comes through Jesus Christ. So the whole purpose of Jesus' arrival, the whole purpose of the cross and the resurrection is that you may have eternal life. Amen? So it's really about life. It's really about life. The word eternal is just the adjective to describe how long it lasts, which means forever, okay? So eternal life actually starts now. Are you hearing me? It's not something that you're going to wait for sometime down the road. It's eternal life starts now and lasts forever. Okay? So it, it, it begins from your time that you have relationship with Jesus. That's your eternal life starts now. So our idea sometimes is that it's going to happen sometime down the road. That it's about going to heaven and, and, or going to hell. But friends... This means that the whole reason that Jesus came, died on the cross, and rose against is so that you and I could have this kind of life. And listen, let me correct some of our thinking, all right? Right here. Let's just correct and align some of our thoughts, all right? Some of us, because we watch uh, preachers or teachers on TV or wherever, on radio or whatever, we have this idea that Jesus came so we could have stuff. You know what I'm talking about? So we could have things in life. So Jesus came to bless you with many things and many possessions that if you have Jesus in your life, you have all these things that you will enjoy so we could be well off. We think that the whole purpose or the whole existence, our existence, is just to be happy, to have stuff, and to never be sick, all right? And, and our idea is, I'll give God a try, and, um, and, and, and if I could earn enough points with God, somewhere, I, or some, sometime down the road, I will be rewarded with an easy life, all right? So that, you know, being with the Lord is like having an easy life. So how many of you have ever... Um, thought or something happened in your life that you said, now, Lord, is this really what it's about? You know? You know, somewhere down the road, uh, maybe, you know, you, you, you lost a job. And you say, well, why did this happen to me? I mean, Lord, didn't you see I've been there for six weeks? I was in the whole series. I never missed one. All right? Now, how come this happened to me? Or you, you, you know, you, uh, 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 something happened. Maybe you lost a loved one. And, and why did this happen? You know, for a whole year, I've been going to church. And yet, this happened to me. And so, for, for some reason, we think that being a, 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 a relationship with the Lord or uh, that, that Jesus came was just for us to have an easy life, that we will have somehow a good life. And, and so when we have a flat tire or something, say, oh, God, you know, seriously, Lord, I have been, you know, faithful to you. <laughs> I've been giving my tithes, and now I get a flat tire. You know what I mean? So sometimes we think this way. You know, I, I went to church a lot, and yet why does this happen to me? See, there's this big um, idea being propagated that if you give your life to Jesus, that all of a sudden, in this existence, everything is going to be smooth and all your problems will go away. For some reason, that is being propagated that, 
when you give your life to Jesus, all your problems will be gone. And how many of you have been around long enough to, to figure out that that's not the case? In fact, when you gave your life to Jesus, your problems began. <laughs> you know, your friends started not liking you, not going with you. Maybe your spouse who, who, who's not born again, didn't know the Lord, uh, you know, didn't like what you're doing. You know, or maybe your relative ostracized you because you now have your faith in God. All of a sudden, your problem began. See, friends, sometimes we have this idea that, or it being propagated, that, you know, Jesus came so that we can have all of these things and be blessed and enjoy life and do what we want to do in life. You know, friends, yes, we are blessed. The Bible says that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. However, our idea of blessed is not the same idea that God has. All right? We think that blessed is to have stuff. <laughs> All right? And, and, uh, and, and we are wrong because that's not what Jesus teach, uh, taught. He came to bring the kingdom of God and to establish his lordship. That those that they put their faith in him would become sons in the kingdom and would have eternal life with him. He never said life will be easy. Are you disappointed? <laughs> you look sad now. All right? Now, he didn't say life would be easy. In fact, the last statement he said in John 16, verse 33. You know, we started in John 17, verse 1. We read in our passage today. But just the verse before that is John 16, verse 33. And look what it says in John 16, 33. I have told you these things, Jesus said, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have what? What did he say? Trouble. In this world you will have trouble. But he said, take heart, I have overcome the world. So, and then... He looked up and prayed, and we followed our verses this morning. So the, the very first thing he said before he talked about knowing God and the whole purpose of why he came, first he said that there's going to be trouble, that this world will have trouble. But he said, be of good cheer. You see, Jesus came, you know, and, and, told, uh, and told his disciples that in this world we will have trouble, but we need to be encouraged because if we are in Christ, he said, you will have peace and you will overcome. Are you hearing me? You will have peace and you will overcome. So it's not that it will be easy. Jesus came so you will have eternal life. You will have the real life. And friends, real life is not about the absence of trouble. All right, but the presence of Jesus in the midst of trouble. Are you hearing me? Let me say that again. Real life is not the absence of trouble. Right? So in the real life, that, that doesn't mean that you have no trouble at all. No. Real life is not the absence of trouble, but the presence of Jesus or God in the midst of trouble. That's real life. That in the real life, you're going to face the trouble, but you can overcome because the Lord is with you. And that's the good news. That in the midst of everything, in the midst of what we're going through, He is with us. You see, John 10.10 10 says this. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So Jesus came to give us that life. He gave us that kind of life. This is the abundant life, that life eternal, the overcoming life. He gave you a champion life. Amen? And that's why we say, get a life at champion life. Tell the person beside you, get a life. <laughs> at champion life. <laughs> All right? You need to get a life. And that life comes from God, all right? So Jesus came to give us that life, that eternal life. Now, the second truth is this. Eternal life 
is knowing God. So the Bible says, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So basically, Jesus defines eternal life in two words, knowing God. That's what eternal life is about. Eternal life is about knowing God. Now, Jesus came so we can know God. Right? That's the whole purpose. Jesus came so that we can know God. So you can have eternal life, which means eternal life is what? Knowing God. So Jesus came really so that you and I can know God. And that's why uh, Jesus reflected the Father. And so he revealed the Father wherever he went. And so when you see him, you've seen the Father. He came to reveal the Father to the people so that you can know God. Amen? That's why he came. All right, so this is transformational. Jesus thought that eternal life is not about a destination. It's not a place you're going to go to. All right, it's actually living it out. For many people, when they think about eternal life, it's about going to heaven or hell sometime down the road. Now, of course, there is a heaven and there is a hell, and that's all a part of that. But in reality, that life begins now. All right? Tell the person beside you, your life begins now. It begins now. It's that relationship that we have. Jesus said, now this is eternal life, that they know you. He's talking to God the Father. That they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So the Father and the Son. Now when he says that eternal life is knowing God, he's not talking about knowledge about God. All right? So he's not talking about the knowledge about God. He's talking about the knowledge of God. All right? There's a difference. You see, there's a big difference in believing things about God and actually knowing God and trusting in Him. See, trusting God comes from a relationship and goes beyond just knowing about Him. See, believing things about God is educational. You know, you can learn some information about God. That's very educational. You can learn so, many, so much information. It gives you information about God, but not enough to actually put your trust in Him. All right, so uh, knowing about God is not the same as knowing God or uh, the knowledge about God is different from the knowledge of God. I'll tell you, in a way, for example, you can think about, the, you can believe about the fact that God heals. All right, you say, oh, God heals. You, you've read it. Uh, this is what it says, that God heals. But does he actually, do you actually believe he'll heal you? Or, or you know about God being a provider. Oh, God is a provider. But do you really think that he will provide for you? See, because knowing God would, you would take it further than just an educational information, but actually now you believe it to be true in your own life. And that is knowing God. You see, so it, it's not just information about him. But because just the information is not enough to put your trust in him. For example, you may have heard about me, all right? Now you can Google me. <laughs> it's true. You can Google me, and you're going to find many things about me, all right? Hopefully they're all good, all right? But you can Google me. Some people do that. When I'm going to speak somewhere, they Google me first and say, okay. You know, and, and they know already about me before I even came, all right? Because they've already Googled my name, all right? So you can actually Google someone and you can know about a person. So you could know about me or maybe you've seen uh, me on YouTube or some other things or maybe uh, uh, some information on some seminar I did or what a conference I did, but you really don't know me. You know about me, but you really don't know me. And because you don't have a relationship with me, you probably won't trust me. Are you hearing me? Because you don't know me. You just heard about me. That doesn't mean you'll trust me. All right? 
And that's why people look at the reviews, you know. Let's look at the reviews. Maybe these people have been there, they know it, <laughs> because there's the review. <laughs> if there's no reviews, I really don't know this person. I can't really trust this person. You see, and that's really those reviews are actually, when we're talking about relationship with God, those reviews are actually those testimonies of people who have been able to say, I have experienced God in this way. And then you, you start to hear from them and you, you now put your faith and you say, well, I'm going to try that too. And then you start to have your own experience. And see, because that's knowing God is different from just believing things about Him. Trusting in God is transformational. It transforms your life. And that's the reason why head knowledge will never transform you. You can know about a lot of things. You can read about a lot of books. But if you don't know him, if you don't have a relationship with him, and if you're not walking with him, you don't know him and it doesn't transform you. So because knowing God is transformational. It's not educational. All right? So when Jesus said that he came, died on the cross, rose again, his whole deal was about you having eternal life. And eternal life is knowing God. That is what eternal life is about. It's not some uh, thing that's going to happen down the road. It's about now. It's about having a relationship with Him now. He came to offer you a relationship, not just in the hereafter or in heaven, but in the here and the now. The purpose of life is to know God and walk with God. That's the whole purpose of life. It's not so that you can be wealthy and, and enjoy all of the great things that you have in life. That's good. That's a bonus. But that's not the whole purpose of life. The whole purpose of life is to know God in your life. Because He created you for His purpose. He created you for His pleasure. So it's not he created you so you can have your pleasure and then not have anything to do with God. And that's the reason why many people who may own a lot of things and have so many things in life have the best cars, the best house, the best vacation houses, the best life that they may have and still feel empty. Why? Because they don't know the person who created him. You see, you will never find satisfaction in life until you go back and you know the, the one who created you. There will always be a vacuum in your heart. And your life will never be satisfied until we go back to the original purpose of why we are here. And that purpose is to know God in our life. See, so friends, a purpose in life is to know Him. The things that you've heard about in the Scriptures, the things that you've read, whether you're a church person or not, all of it is about knowing God. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, all of it is about knowing God. Now, if you look at some of the biblical examples, for example, the greatest thing for David, you know, David, the king, it's not when he defeated Goliath or when he became king. The greatest thing for David was that he knew God. He was a man after God's own heart. And so, the greatest thing for Moses was not when he uh, walked on the dry ground and parted the Red Sea. You know, the greatest thing for Moses was that he knew God and he was a friend of God. That was the greatest thing. The greatest thing for Abraham was not that he became the father of many nations. The greatest thing for Abraham was he knew God and he trusted in God. So much so that he was fully persuaded that God can do what he promised. And he had the ability to do what he promised. That he never wavered in his faith in God. That's how much he knew God. Is that how much you know God? That you will not waver in your faith knowing that you're fully persuaded that he has the ability to do what he promised you? Is that the way we know God or we know about God. You see, the greatest thing for, for Simon Peter was not when he walked on water, 
But the greatest thing for Peter was the, the fact that he had a relationship with God through his faith in Christ, that he knew who the Messiah was. The greatest thing for Paul, the apostle, was not the miracles he performed. The greatest thing for Paul is that he knew God through his faith in Christ. He wanted to know him more, all right? How wide, how long, how deep, you know, read the epistles. And he's saying, how much I want to know him, all right? You know, in, in, in spite of the fact that he was a great apostle, he accomplished many things, and yet he says, you know, all of those things that I've had, they're nothing, they're rubbish compared to just knowing him in my life. Wow. You know, it's just compared to knowing him that even the, 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 the things that he goes through with even being shipwrecked and being persecuted, all of that, he said, all of those suffering, it means nothing. If I can only know the, the, the power of his resurrection. You see, he wanted to know Christ even more in his life. So friends, the whole purpose of us uh, having Christ in our life is to know him. Amen? All these great men and women of the Bible were not focused on a destination. They were not focused on, oh, someday I'm going to go to heaven. <laughs> they weren't focused on that. In fact, they were all doing everything at the moment. They, if you read their stories of how they, they continue to, to pursue God and they, how they continue to advance the kingdom of God in spite of the persecution, they were looking at the moment. They were looking at the here and now, advancing the kingdom of God, no matter what they were facing. And they were not focusing on somewhere down the road that one day they're going to go to heaven. They were focusing on here and now that they're walking with God in their life. And so, friend, that teaches us a lesson for those of us who have faith in Christ. It's not just about the fact that we've given our life to the Lord and we know Him already and then say, that's it. You know, I'm a Christian. I'm going to heaven that I'm saved. Once I'm saved, I'm forever saved. Nothing will ever happen to me. And that's it. I'll live my life just by and by, everything will just be enjoyment. That's not what God teaches. That's not what the Bible teaches. See, because the whole purpose of Jesus coming is that we may have eternal life, and that eternal life is knowing Him. And that life starts now. See, friends, these men of the Bible, men and women of the Bible, they walk with God. That's why Paul even said in Philippians 1, 21. Look what he said. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Wow. Imagine that. He said, if I'm going to live, I'm going to live for Christ. That's it. And if I'm going to die, it's gain. I'm there. I'm with him already. So from now until then, I'm with him. That's why he said, you know, whether you live or die, you belong to the Lord. Because your whole life from this moment is walking with Him. It's knowing Him, growing in Him. Amen? That's what it's all about. You see, for some of us, you know, uh, we, 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 we don't think this way. We think that somehow it's just, you know, down the road. And so therefore, you know, if I've given my life to the Lord, that's it. I'm, I'm already saved. I'm okay now. And so, therefore, I'll just come when I'm, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not busy, you know, and, and I'll study the Word. I'll pray when I can, you know. But anyway, I already know the Lord, and I'm going to go to heaven one day. My purpose in life is to be blessed and just enjoy the blessing of God. And that is not what the Bible teaches. Friends, it includes that, but Jesus thought that the reason you're alive right now, the reason why you're still breathing right now, the reason that God formed you in your mother's womb so you can know God, have a relationship with God, and walk with God. Amen? You look sad. I just told you <laughs> the God of the universe became Emmanuel so he can walk with you. 
You should be happy. See, wow. Imagine that the God of the universe, the God who created the heavens and the earth, can actually have a relationship with you, can actually walk with you. You can actually know him. You can even be a friend of him. Amen. What a great privilege and honor to be able to walk with God. You know, for some of us, we're doing what's right. We're living a good life. And really, what we're after, what we're hoping for, is what God will give us. It could be that we're trusting in some outcome, you know, some result. We're trusting in some blessings instead of trusting in Him, the one who actually blesses. That's why we are having difficulty when our reality is not what we expected. We, we get frustrated. Um, we, we get sad. We get depressed when our reality is not what we were expecting because our expectation is that we will have this great life with God. Friends, life is knowing God, not just in the nice stuff, but even in the midst of pain and suffering. Even in our sickness, we can still walk with God. Amen? Even in our, when, you know, even in our problems, even in our trouble, even in our tragedies, we can still know God. He didn't depart from you. He is there. And we could know Him. The same God of the mountains, the same God of the valley. The same God when you were rejoicing, when you got your first job, when you got married, when you got your house, when you got, you know, it's your provision. The same God in all of that is the same God in your problem, in your sickness, in your troubles, in your tragedies, in your crisis. He's the same God. He didn't go. And that's why, you know, David, I love, David really had a relationship of knowing God that he could say, you know, he leads me beside still water, right? He, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He gives me that peace. He provides for me. But then he also says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's knowing God. That yes, I know him in my good times, but I also know him in my bad times. It's not only knowing God when you have a lot of good stuff, but knowing God in every season of your life, you know God. In your midst of your, in your problems, in your, in your rejoicing, we are to know God. Life is about God. It's not about getting his stuff. It's nice to get stuff, but it's not about that. It's about getting him. It's about having him in our life. If you and I are going to be established in the Christian faith, we've got to start right there. And I believe that's the reason why many Christians fall so much is because they don't have this established in that in their life of knowing God, that God can be known even in your difficulties, in your challenges, because they only have the idea that when you know God, it's all about blessing and prosperity. There's no about sacrifice and pain and suffering. Uh, it, there's nothing like that. And so they, don't, they, get, uh, they get frustrated when they don't see the other things. And they don't see uh, what they expect. And so, friends, when we have the true reality, when we really understand the truth of why Jesus came and who he is in our life and what, what is knowing God about, when we have that fully established in our heart, we won't get frustrated like that because we'll be able to say that we will rejoice even in our problems. (laughs) That we will be able to say, you know, in your trouble, still you rejoice. Why? Because the Lord is still with you. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. Amen. So friends, it's the cornerstone of the whole thing that through my faith in Jesus, I have eternal life, which is what? a relationship with God that never ends. And so the third truth is this, right? So first, Jesus came 
that we may have eternal life. All right? And eternal life is knowing God. And knowing God, thirdly, is a relationship. Christianity is about a relationship with God. That is what it's about. All right? Knowing God is a relationship. It's about having a relationship with God. It's what it's about. It's about relationship, knowing God and walking with God. Relationship is intentional. Are you hearing me? Relationship is intentional. What does uh, being intentional mean? It means it doesn't just happen. Are you hearing me? In our busy schedules, right, in the 21st century, you must have to make time to have a relationship. Because we have such busy schedules that, you know, sometimes when people have so much, so, so, such a busy schedule, when they come to know the Lord Jesus, all they did was add him on the calendar. <laughs> I'll, I'll just add Jesus to my schedule and I'll fit him in when I can. But my schedule is so tight that I have no room for Jesus. And that's just the way people have done it. That they think that Jesus is just somebody that you add to your schedule. You see, Jesus uh, is, is a, a person that we can have relationship with. It's God that we can have relationship, and that means that we must be intentional in that relationship. That we must make time to have a relationship. You cannot have a good lasting relationship by just seeing the person once a week for two hours. And sometimes we miss that. Imagine, think about this for a moment. Would you have a good relationship with your spouse and you told your spouse, your husband or wife, and say, I'm just going to see you once a week, only for two hours, and in that two hours, for 45 minutes, I will listen to you. The rest I won't. And then you expect a good relationship, <laughs> right? <laughs> for for that, that's it. That's all that relationship is about. You see, how can you really know someone by not speaking and listening to someone? You know, in the same way, if we want to know God, then we have to make time to build that relationship. Amen. Tell the person beside you, take time to build the relationship. Amen. Take time to build relationship. It's not enough to just come once a week for two hours and sometimes even miss it. Do you know that one pastor told me, because the pastors were talking one time and, and I was in with other pastors and and, and they were talking about their attendance and all that. And one pastor said, oh, you know, here in, in, uh, in Canada, North America, basically, you know, you're good if people will attend twice a month. That's it. He said, you're doing well. Wow, I said, is that it? Twice a month. If they attend twice a month, you're good. And that's the expectation that in churches today, twice a month is good. You're doing well. Because some only come once a month or once every Easter and Christmas. Right? And so that to them, that's knowing God. That's relationship with God. Now, is that really a relationship with God or you just know about God? You know about God, but you don't know God. All right? You may have a label, but you don't know God. Because to know Him means you have a relationship with Him. That you actually know who He is in your life and how He, you know, what He likes, what He displeases Him, what, what are the things that, you know, I mean, if you know someone, you know what they like, they don't like. You know what I'm talking about? They even have this little game for, for you know, newlyweds, right? You know, they know their partner. You know, what things they like, what they don't like. And that's the same thing. When you know God, you need to know what he, what he likes, what he dislikes. 
knowing Him. So, friend, we must carve out time every day to have a relationship with Jesus. Carve out time. Why I say carve it out? <laughs> Why? Because there is really no time. You have to carve it out. You have to make it. If you don't make it, it doesn't happen. If you don't set it aside, it doesn't happen. 24 hours a day that we have and we get so busy, if we don't set it aside, you won't have time to know God. The church, friends, has weekly Sunday celebrations for us to worship Him. So that's why we have Sundays, so we can worship Him. So even if we go to that one, at least, you know, every week, we get to worship Him. And then we have the life groups, that during the week, you, you, you have time where we can study the Word of God together with, with others, and we can learn, and we can learn what is the Christian life and how we could walk that out. So, so you're knowing more about God. And then we have the prayer nights, the weekly prayer meetings on Wednesday, so that you can what? Pray to Him. So now you can talk to God. So of course you're doing that every, every day, but at the same time you, you, you go together with other believers and you pray to God. And that's communing with God. So we have all of these things that, that are disciplines that we put in the church so that we can know Him. Amen? And people say, why would you have that? Why have this? Why have this? We can just cut this, cut that. They don't want any more activities. Well, how are you going to know God in the church if we have no activities? Nothing to do. The only way we're going to know God is that we fill the church with activities about God and knowing Him. Amen? And, and I would encourage you to go to those ones so that you could learn and grow more in your faith in Him. So here's the other thing. Relationship is intentional, but also relationship is communicating. It's about talking and listening. You know what's communicating? Talking and listening. How do you like to be in this, the room that the only one person is talking and they don't give you time to talk? You don't feel good, right? <laughs> they just talk, 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 talk. And you don't have time to actually talk to them. You know, um, that's not a good relation. A relationship is when you take time to talk and take time to listen. That is communicating. Just being in the same room at the same time is not a relationship. Are you hearing? Just because you're in the same room doesn't mean we have a relationship. You could sit together for hours and just look at each other. And you don't know him. <laughs> you don't know each other because you never talk. We need to talk. We need to communicate. That's relationship. You cannot have a relationship with someone just sitting with them and assume that they know you and you know them. Somehow they have a crystal ball. That doesn't work that way. In relationship with human beings, we don't have relationship like that. How much more with God? It, with God, we, we, that's why he wants us to pray. We talk with him. And that's why he, we, he talks to us. He talks to his word. He talks to the Holy Spirit. You know, the still small voice. You know, he speaks to us. So we, we talk to him. He speaks to us. But if we're so busy with our life that we, we don't do anything, we don't take time to listen and sit and hear from God, we don't know him. We cannot know him. Or we can just be sitting and not really paying attention to what God is is doing in our life. Do you know that you can be in this room and still not engage with God? You could be thinking about Florida because it's nicer weather right now or maybe thinking about what's for lunch. You know, who's going to treat you to sushi or something? You know, it's, you could be here in the room but you're somewhere else. That's the same thing. It doesn't mean that you're beside someone that you know him and that you're, you need to communicate. And communicating is the relationship. You know, it, it, in, uh, relationship involves communicating. So friends, we speak to him in our prayers. We listen to his word and through the Holy Spirit. So over the next few weeks, okay, we're going to talk about how that works. So if you're going to have a relationship with somebody, you've got to learn to talk to them and got to learn to listen to them. Amen? In fact, next week, 
we're going to talk about how to hear from God and how to communicate with God. And we're going to grow and be established in our relationship with Him in that we will be rooted and established in His love. So I hope you will join us again next week as we're talking about hearing God. Amen? You received that this morning? All right, so it's all about knowing God. Jesus Christ came that we may have eternal life. And eternal life is not about heaven and hell. It's about knowing Him. And knowing Him is a relationship. That relationship is intentional, and it's about communicating. So, friends, that's how we can know God. And may you grow this week. May you continue to know God in your life.